Hello, thank you for joining me for this leadership vlog. I wanna just give you a shout out, props for you and your desire and your journey uh, to becoming the best leader that you can be. And thank you for inviting me along the way. Today's subject is a really good one. We wanna talk about the leadership gap, the role of standing for someone. Really important. You see, the cheapest form of leadership is standing against something. And I don't, I don't want to diminish the reality of needing to make judgment calls or to have value statements in our culture. It's really important. I don't believe in abortion. I don't support abortion. I am anti-abortion simply because I believe in the deity of God as a creator and everything that he creates is, has his fingerprints on it. Life begins at conception because God conceived that one and made that individual in the womb. But being against something is the cheapest form of leadership. It's one of the reasons why I don't put a sign on a stick and walk around. And you might say, well, uh, that's an important thing. And I, I don't, no offense to those who intended to those who carry those signs. I am absolutely anti-abortion. I just believe being against someone and making a statement that's only against something is the cheapest form of leadership. It costs much more if I was really anti-abortion for me to actually look at the, what it's going to cost me instead of a day to march and a, and a, a buck 15 for a piece of poster board. What's it gonna cost for me to minister to the lives of those young ladies or older ladies or middle-aged or whatever ladies who are in crisis in their lives? What's it gonna cost for us to provide uh, healthcare and aftercare for the birth of a baby that they had considered aborting? That cost is much greater. And dear ones, I believe that that's what the cost of real leadership is. It's not just standing against something, but it's standing for something. And I'm going to piggyback off of our last vlog on out of Ezekiel chapter 22. And I want to read chapter 22 and verse 30. So I sought, this is the Lord saying, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land and I, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Let me just pause before we launch off of that verse and talk about the role of standing for someone. And let me just talk to you about our culture and the statements that are going on in our culture right now. I'm absolutely against racism in any form and in every form. But I don't pick up a sign and go join a protest because again, in my view, it's the cheapest form of leadership to rally people to be a, 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 um, uh, a community organizer, to rally people in a protest, it to me is the cheapest form. It's the lowest cost of leadership. What's it going to take to bring real change? Well, I would submit to you the cost of that leadership is greater than the cost of leading a protest. You see, we can, if we're not careful, take up a cause and lead to a cause rather than lead from a creator or from the creator. If we pick up a cause, we might find ourselves susceptible for that cause to become an idol in our lives. And when that happens, the creator is no longer on the throne. The cause is on the throne. And now we become like Nebuchadnezzar, willing to heat our furnace seven times hotter to anybody who will not bow to the cause that we have deemed the cause. And that's why when you say white lives matter, you are the enemy. All lives matter. You are the enemy because we're not bowing to a cause. Again, don't be offended. If you're offended, check your heart. I'm not, I'm not for racism in any form. In any form. Why? Because I'm not putting a, a cause up to an, a, the stat, status of an idol in my life. I am endeavoring to bow to a creator who's made us all equal in his eyes. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's no, neither female or male. There's neither black or white. God doesn't look at us that way. He, looks, he doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks at the heart, right? 
So my desire as a leader and in training leaders is to help them process and distill things down into what's really valuable and important and pay that cost. Don't, don't just be willing to pay the cheapest cost because it's being, it's, it's being willing to stand for someone, not for something that God is looking for in his leaders. So let's get back to this verse. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall to stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. God found no one. Now, this verse is often used in teaching about intercession, and rightly so. The, the imagery is we're going before the Lord on behalf of the people, right? We're facing the Lord. We're making intercession. We're praying so that God wouldn't destroy the, the land, right? That's, that's an appropriate uh, context for intercession and prayer. But I want to suggest to you that the broader, greater implication of this verse is in leadership, not in intercession. Because God is looking for more than just people or more than people who can just pray. Hear me. Don't be offended, intercessors, people who are prayer warriors. This is, intercession is important. Pray without ceasing. It's, it's so important. God doesn't do anything on the planet unless he's doing it in response and partnership with us and man. Because men who are not just carrying a, 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 a cause, but are carrying the, the cause of the creator, right? I get it. But here's what I want to say to you. This imagery of before carries a different connotation and can carry a different connotation. When Abraham was sending Eliezer to go find a bride for his son Isaac, he was explaining to Eliezer the mandate that the Lord gave him. And he said to Eliezer, the Lord said to me, I'm going to send the angel of the Lord before you because I'm going to give you the land that I'm sending you to. So I want you to think that thought. The angel of the Lord was being sent before Abraham. In, front, in other words, in front of him. So another use of this word before is in front of. And isn't that actually the definition of what leadership is? Going before someone, out in front, leading. I want to suggest to you that this verse has as much to do about leadership as it does about prayer or intercession. God is looking for leaders who will go before him. In other words, carrying the creator's will and his assignment. Jesus said, listen, in the garden, I, I, I'd really rather this not turn out this way, Father. But nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours be done. Then he taught his disciples to pray. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This will thing is about a person, not a cause. It's about the person of God and representing him well. In the earth. What is his will regarding racism? What is his will regarding abortion? What is his will regarding the social and cultural problems of our day? Now, as we back up into verse 29, that's verse 30 in Ezekiel 22. 29 kind of gives us the stage or the context. He said there are robberies, oppressed people, there, there are poor and needy who are being mistreated. That's a social and cultural context. It's social and cultural problems that they were facing. And God was saying, I'm looking for a leader who will take the creator's viewpoint, the creator's perspective, not just a cause, and bring me into this situation. That's what leadership looks like in the kingdom. Wow. And so God's not just looking for someone who can pray. He's looking for someone who can go before him on behalf of the people. In other words, when we take God's perspective and his viewpoint on something, it may not look exactly like what the people think should happen, but it will ultimately bring about the right change and solve the issues. And so I'm looking around today in our cultural unrest and I'm looking for the leaders. Where are the leaders? Where are the leaders? In Ezekiel's day, sadly, God reported, I have found none. May it not be so in our day. Maybe you're one of those leaders God's talking to and raising up in this season, not just to have a voice, but have, have a, a, to model something out of the creator's mindset. Wow, how powerful would that be? So the role of standing for someone First, we're standing for God. Make no mistake, this is about standing for and on behalf of God. Not standing and representing people, but standing and representing God for the people's sake. Does that make sense? There's a difference. 
You see, he said, I'm looking for someone to make a wall, number one. And number two, to stand in the gap. Walls are important because they define boundaries. Walls, walls are important because they define city. In the biblical day, they walled their cities to protect them, to make them secure, right? Nehemiah was sent back to rebuild the fallen wall of the city of Jerusalem to re-secure the capital city of Israel. And so the wall became really important, and Nehemiah went out, and you remember the story in the cover of night, and he surveyed the wall. And he looked at his damage, so he knew what needed to happen in order to build the wall. God's looking for leaders who can survey, even if it's under the cover of nightfall. Out, of the, out from the view of prying eyes who want to manipulate a picture for their benefit. Or want to send out a tweet to get more likes. I want to suggest to you that Nehemiah was sent on an assignment on behalf of the Creator to build a wall for the people. To bring security where they had no security. To bring safety where there was no safety. Where, there's, where the wall is broken down, enemies and intruders. See, when a wall is not present, when the wall is not healthy, when there are not healthy boundaries for the people of God and for the earth and for our society, intruders come with a demonic influence. And they influence the way we think. See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the mighty through God, pulling down of strongholds, imaginations that, that ascend to make war against thoughts of Christ and what he stands for. That, by nature, is anti-Christ. And our world is full of imageries and pictures today of unrest that has been dri being driven by anti-Christ. How do I know that? Because the produ production, what's being produced, is not is anarchy. It's not toward safety and well-walled cities. It's not, we're not seeing boundaries that are being established that are representing the Creator. We're seeing more systemic issues being written into the fabric of our society. The question is: whose wall are you willing to build? Your wall? The people's wall, what they want built? Or will you be willing to stand to build the Creator's wall? What's in His mind to solve this situation? Whatever situation you find yourself in, what's in His mind as a solution? Are you willing to lay aside your plans for your wall, the plans that the people have for their wall, and build God's wall? He's looking for someone to, to make a wall, to build a wall. And secondly, he's built, looking for someone to stand in the gap. See, gaps are places of weakness where enemies get access to exploit and plunder. You know, John 10.10 10 tells us the, that the Son has come to give us life and life abundantly, but the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does that through finding access in gaps in our walls. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Why is it the little foxes? Because they can find the little cracks and the crevices and get through the, the weaknesses in the wall. God's looking for leaders who are willing to build walls and stand in the gaps. When they find a gap, when there's a crack in the wall, leaders go to that wall and are vigilant and are aware and are strong and courageous and they make it their assignment to protect the city by standing in the gap. It's not just a prayer thing. It's an action thing. It's an agenda thing. It's a purpose thing. It's a mind and perspective of a creator that he loves the city and he wants it protected at all costs. So the leaders, when there's trouble, they run to where the trouble is. I had a dream uh, many, many years ago. And in the dream, uh, there was a hurricane coming in, on shore in this beach. And everyone, when they turned to see this hurricane coming, they were turning from the beach in the water and running the other direction. And I found this insatiable desire to run into the ocean and into the storm. And the Lord began to teach me that leaders have this, this courageous passion to run to the problem and to, to stand on behalf of the Creator to represent Him well 
so that the people are protected, even if they don't even know what they're being protected from or how to protect, protect themselves. It's the leader's responsibility to stand in the gap. And I find it really interesting as I finish this video that Nehemiah, he found families who would stand in those gaps in the wall. And they stood with a sword or a spear in one hand and a trial in the other. In other words, they stood for two things as they were standing in the gap. They were, they were protecting with a sword, with a weapon, and they were building. And dear ones, I want to suggest to you, maybe you are a leader that God's raising up in our day. Maybe you're one of those few, very few generational leaders, and God's going to give you a voice on a grand scale. Maybe you're leading in your company or your church or your family or your friend group. What kind of leader are you going to be? Are you going to choose the cheapest forms of leadership and only stand against something? Or maybe the middle form of leadership standing for something, like a cause? Let me invite you to choose the highest form of leadership, and that's standing for someone. Stand and build a wall for God. Stand in the gap for God on behalf of his people. And let's learn to be the best leader we can be.